Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be reading some Targaryen lore, particularly I'm going to look at Daenerys Targaryen, Rhaegar Targaryen, and the dragons, and we'll see where we're at after that, and maybe we'll explore some more, depending on how short we are on time, but I figured that since Game of Thrones is the premiere of season 8 is right around the corner. Um, I'm going to be doing some Game of Thrones videos this week, one after another. Um, I'm going to be exploring different character lore. Uh, I've already done Stark, and I'll put a link to the playlist below uh, in the description. Um, so Lannister will be next in the next video. Um, and so I'll release about two to three videos on uh, Game of Thrones characters, and we'll just have some fun. Um, but yeah, let's just dive into it and let's start with Daenerys Targaryen and learn her background and lore. And this is a quote from her. I spent my life in foreign lands. So many men have tried to kill me. I don't remember all of their names. I have been sold like a broodmare. I've been chained and betrayed, raped and defiled. Do you know what kept me kept me standing through all those years in exile? Faith. Not in any gods, not in myths and legends. In myself. In Daenerys Targaryen. The world hadn't seen a dragon in centuries until my children were born. The Dothraki hadn't crossed the sea, any sea. They did for me. I was born to rule the Seven Kingdoms, and I will. And this was her talking to Jon Snow, who is also a Targaryen. Spoilers. You shouldn't be watching this, honestly, if you're not caught up, so... I'm just saying. <clears throat> Alright. Queen Daenerys Targaryen is also known as Danny, and Daenerys Stormborn is the younger sister of Rhaegar Targaryen and Viserys Targaryen and only daughter of King Aerys II Targaryen and Queen Rhaela Targaryen, who was born, who, was, who were both ousted. Jesus Christ, this, the way they phrase these things is like, not good for reading um, like that out, out loud. Uh, who were both ousted from the Iron Throne during Robert Baratheon's rebellion. Following the respective deaths of her last brother, Viserys and husband called Drogo, Daenerys builds up her own base of power in Essos, where she hatches three dragons, is joined by prominent ad advisors, including Sir Jorah Mormont and Tyrion Lannister, liberates the slaves of Slaver's Bay, gains the Unsullied, and unites the Dothraki. Daenerys begins her invasion of Westeros with her followers and allies shortly after the War of the Five Kings to take the Iron Throne of the Seven Kingdoms from Cersei Lannister. She formally styles herself as Daenerys Stormborn, Stormborn of House Targaryen, the first of her name, Queen of the Andals, and the First Men, Protector of the Seven Kingdoms, the Mother of Dragons, the Khaleesi of the Great Grass Sea, the Unburnt, the Breaker of Chains. During her campaign, Daenerys negotiates with Jon Snow, who seeks her help against the returned White Walkers. The two become allied after Daenerys' allies in the Reach and Dorne um, are destroyed. Daenerys' allies, excuse me, in the Reach and Dorne are destroyed by the forces of Cersei and Euron Greyjoy. One second while I clear my throat. Okay, we're good. After Daenerys strikes back, she agrees to parlay with Cersei in King's Landing and allows Jon Snow to venture beyond the wall to capture a white. Daenerys rescues Jon and his men when they are encircled by the army of the dead, though one of her dragons is slain by the Night King. John pledges allegiance to Daenerys, and they present the white before Cersei at the parley, who agrees to a truce. 
Captain Harris then sails north with John, putting her quest for the Iron Throne on hold in order to fight in the Great War. The two give into their love during the voyage, unknown that they are in fact, spoilers, related, as John is secretly Daenerys' nephew, the son of Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark. And that's kind of where she is right now. The things that she's done. Um, I think it's up to date with what's going on in the show. Now, this is her biography. Daenerys is the only daughter and youngest child of King Aerys II Targaryen, the Mad King, and his sister, Rhaelia. Her father died during the sack of King's Landing before she was even born. The usurper, Robert Baratheon, installed himself as king, having defeated Aerys in the conquest known as Robert's Rebellion. Her pregnant mother and brother Viserys fled to the island of Dragonstone, the ancestral home of House Targaryen, to escape Robert. Daenerys' brother Rhaegar Targaryen was killed in the war by Robert. The forces of House Lannister murdered Rhaegar's wife, Elia Martell, and their children, Rhaenys and Aegon, during the sack of King's Landing. But, but, unbeknownst to Daenerys and the rest of her family, her oldest brother Rhaegar had another son by Lyanna Stark, who died shortly after giving birth to him. In her final moments, she revealed the true name of their son, Aegon Targaryen brother Eddard. <laughs> to protect his sister's son, Eddard claimed the baby as his illegitimate son and named him John, who who grow up, who grow up, who grew up to <laughs> these typos, dude. I mean, it is Game of Thrones wiki, so there's going to be some typos here and there, I suppose, who would grow up to be known as Jon Snow. Eddard raised John as his own child in Winterfell, and John grew up his maternal side of the family. John initially joined the Night's Watch, but later became king in the north. On the night Daenerys was born, on Dragonstone, a, se a severe summer storm raged. For this reason, she is sometimes called Daenerys Stormborn. Her mother died soon after she was born, leaving her an orphan. As a baby, she was taken into exile in the free cities with her brother Viserys by loyal retainers, among them Sir Will, Willem Derry. After years spent fruitlessly trying to raise support to retake the Iron Throne, Viserys and Daenerys were given sanctuary by Magister Illyrio Mopatis. I don't know how to say some of these names, by the way, because I've never heard them. Or I don't remember them. In the free cities of Pentos, uh, she dreams of finding a peaceful home and a place to belong. She lives in constant fear of Viserys, who hits her when his temper is risen. In his words, whenever she wakes the dragon, leaving, uh, living under Viserys' domin Viserys's domination has left her meek and malleable. <laughs> um, she then goes on to, obviously, do everything that we mentioned in the biography, so we know the story of that. Let's look at a different character now. Um, Rhaegar Targaryen. Let's do Rhaegar. Um, prince Rhaegar Targaryen, the last prince of Dragonstone, was the eldest son and heir to King Aerys II Targaryen, the Mad King. He was the oldest brother of Viserys and Daenerys Targaryen and husband of Elia Martell, with whom he had two children. Rhaenys and Aegon Targaryen. All of these names, by the way, they sound exactly the same to me, so, you know, it's hard to keep track. Half these people, I feel like we're not even ever on screen, so, secretly, however, Rhaegar annulled his marriage with Elia and married Lyanna Stark in Dorne. Uh, Rhaegar's alleged abduction of Lyanna sparked Robert's rebellion, as Lyanna was betrothed, betrothed to Robert Baratheon. Robert killed Rhaegar at the climactic Battle of the Tridents, bringing on the deposition of the Targaryen dynasty. Lyanna's brother, Edward Stark, found her soon after, uh, afterward at the Tower of Joy in Dorne. When
when she was trying, when she was dying in childbirth. She had just given birth to her son with Rhaegar and begged her brother to keep her baby safe. To protect the child from Robert and others who sought the absolute destruction of House Targaryen, Eddard claimed his sister's son as his own bastard child. Excuse me, there are some cars outside, and they are annoying. I hope you can look past that. I'll try to cut it out, but if I can't, you know, hopefully that wasn't too distracting. Uh, Eddard claimed his son as his own bastard child, whom he had fathered during the war, the war John Snow. Prince Rhaegar Targaryen was the eldest son and heir of King Aerys II Targaryen by sister by his sister wife Queen Rhaella Targaryen. For three centuries, the Targaryens had continued to incestuously marry brother to sister to keep the bloodline pure. 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 I don't know why I said it like that. And the tradition of their Valerian ancestors. Over time, this massive inbreeding led to a strain of insanity appearing in the Targaryen blood culminating in Rhaegar's father, Aerys II, who is best remembered as the Mad King. And we'll get to him after this. Um, Aerys II's reign began with great promise, but as the years passed, he slid deeper and deeper into insanity and paranoia. The shift was gradual, and he frequently recovered by the time uh, it became severe. He, uh, Prince, Reg Prince Rhaegar already showed such great, such, such great. <laughs> it's easier to, it's easier, it looks easier than it is to read and look at the camera at the same time. I'm just, I'm not trying to make excuses, but I'm just saying, sometimes it's gonna, it's gonna happen and you just gotta roll with it. Um, Prince Rhaegar already showed such great promise <laughs> as the future heir to the throne that most were willing to simply put up with Ares' eccentricities to wait out the remainder of his ra uh, reign until Rhaegar succeeded him. Rhaegar was brave, kind, and wise, and most looked forward to the golden arrow that would assuredly begin when he would ascend to the throne. Greatly troubled by Ares II's growing insanity, Rhaegar was torn between whether to act against him or not, but could not bring himself to turn against his own father. Like the rest of the realm, Rhaegar hoped to simply wait out the rest of his father's reign, and that his bouts of insanity would remain manageable by his courtiers. Rhaegar had good reason to think to think that the small council could keep the realm together despite his father's madness, as it was very capably led by Ty Tywin Lannister, who served as Ares' hand for nearly twenty years. <laughs> Tywin was not only able to keep Eris from tearing the realm apart, but managed royal affairs so well that he brought two decades of peace and plenty for Westeros to the point that most people thought, uh, most people throughout the realm were unaware of the king's madness until the final years of his reign. Let me take a sip of water real quick. Ah, refreshing. Uh, because Eris and his sister wife, sister wife, that's such a weird sentence, had produced no daughters for Rhaegar to wed, he had to look outside the family for a bride. Many assumed that in reward for Tywin's long and distinguished service as Ares' chief advisor, the bond between the Targaryens and the Lannisters would eventually be solidified with a marriage alliance between Prince Rhaegar and Tywin's daughter, Cersei. Particularly Cersei herself, who for a time was quite infatuated with Rhaegar. Yet, Eris surprisingly spurned the marriage, saying that, the, saying that Tywin was still just a servant and shouldn't try to elevate his family above its station, as such a match was beneath Rhaegar. It was later believed that Eris did this in a fit of paranoia that Tywin was trying to usurp his throne. Despite everything Tywin had done for him in two decades of loyal service, Ares had grown so resentful and fearful that many people throughout the realm 
whispered accurately that Tywin was the real power behind the throne by that point. Alienating his longtime hand, Aerys instead agreed to an arranged marriage between Rhaegar and Elia Martell, a princess from Dorne, a daughter of the ruling princess of Dorne. Um, Rhaegar and Elia's marriage was happy according to all accounts. Over in Martell, over in Martell, Elia's younger brother said that his sister loved her husband. Rhaegar and Elia had two children, a daughter named Rhaenys, <coughs> and then a son named Aegon. Let me take another sip of water. My throat is scratchy today. Okie dokie. <coughs> a few years later, the great tourney of Heron Hall was held, where all the prominent lords of Westeros assembled. During the feast, Rhaegar played a song on his harp so beautiful and sorrowful that it moved even the wild she-wolf Lyanna Stark to tears. The exact events that happened in private are unknown, but the public events at the tourney's final joust are known to all. Rhaegar faced off against Sir Barristan Selmy in the final tilt and won. Instead of then giving the victor's wreath to his own wife, Elia Martell, however, the entire crowd of hundreds of people fell silent as he rode past her and gave it to Lyanna Stark to name her as the tourna tournament's queen of love and beauty. An act that was doubtably controversial, as Lyanna, Lyanna was herself already betrothed to Robert Baratheon. At the same tourney, King Aerys announced that he was naming young Jaime Lannister to the king's car. While he was a very skilled swordsman, Aerys really appointed Jamie to the really appointed Jamie to the order to rob Tywin of his eldest son and heir, as the King's Guard forswore all right to inheritance and treat him as a glorified political hostage at the royal court should Tywin ever turn against him. Tywin was in Infuriated as he had been grooming Jamie for years to succeed him as ruler of the Western lands. And by law, Jamie's removal meant that the first in line to inherit Casterly, Casterly Rock would be Tywin's hated dwarf son, Tyrion. Tywin promptly is this Lannister lore. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> this is more about the Lannisters than the Targaryens, but I guess they're all intertwined in a way. Ah, uh, Tywin promptly resigned as hand of the king and withdrew from King's Landing to Casterly Lock Rock. Casterly Lock, wow. About a year after the tourney, under as yet unknown circumstances, Rhaegar allegedly abducted Lyanna Stark. Unknown to all, Lyanna had actually desired to leave with Rhaegar, and they ran off together to the Red Mountains of Dorne. They stayed at a relatively small castle, Rhaegar named the Tower of Joy. Rhaegar arranged for the High Septon to grant him an annulment from his marriage to Elia Martell, then personally officiate his secret marriage to Lyanna the same day. Lyanna's eldest brother, Brandon, then rode to King's Landing to demand the return of his sister and the death of Rhaegar, a rash thing to do according to the others. King Aerys imprisoned him, imprisoned him, and when their father, Rickard, went south to ransom his son, he was imprisoned as well. Um, he was imprisoned as well. Uh, I lost my place there, jeez. Where am I? 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 Do, 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 do. All right, let's just start. Excuse me. Um, do, 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 do. King Aerys imprisoned him, and when their father went, da, 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 the Mad King then brutally executed the Mad King then brutally executed both of them by burning Lord Rickard alive with wildfire in front of the Iron Throne and baiting Brandon into strangling himself to death in an effort to save his father. Afterwards, King Aerys demanded that John Aaron send him the heads of Eddard Stark and Robert Baratheon. John Aaron refused and instead raised his banners in revolt. Eddard Stark and Lyanna's betrothed Robert Baratheon joined him to overthrow the Targaryen dynasty. Um, yeah, this is actually a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. Um, I think that I'm just going to stop it there and jump to the Mad King. Because we really 
want to see that now, don't we? Um, let's see. Actually, you know what? I can just continue then. I mean, it's all kind of connected, isn't it? Yeah, I would say so, because this is all kind of, it's going to be a little bit repetitive at some point, right? Um, yeah, let's just continue then. This war became known as Robert's Rebellion, or the War of the Usurper, to the Targaryen loyalists. To confusion of many, Rhaegar's location remained unknown during most of the war, which lasted about a year, as Robert Baratheon's rebel army fought its way up from Storm's End through the Reach and Riverlands, and then up to the Tridents. Rhaegar was nowhere to be seen. For months, it seems, he stayed in, in seclusion with Lyanna at the Tower of Joy in Dorne. During this early phase of the rebellion, Ares II continued to think of Robert Baratheon as just an outlaw lord. But after he defeated all of the local royal armies thrown at him and crossed north of the Trident, Ares finally I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly, by the way, so forgive me. Finally realized that is that this was the worst revolt the Targaryens had faced in over a century. Around the same time, Rhaegar suddenly returned to the royal court at King's Landing to lead the Crown's armies. Both sides now mobilized the full might of their forces. Robert led his army south, composed of Bar uh, Baratheon, Stark, Tully, and Aaron forces, while Rhaegar led the army north to meet him, composed of the Targaryen armies raised from the Crownlands, supplemented by another 10,000 from Dorne. Accompanying Rhaegar were two of the King's Guard, Barristan Selmy and Lewin Martell, an uncle of Rhaegar's wife, Elia. On the way, Rhaegar privately confided to Barristan that after they won, there would be many chances at the royal court upon his return, alluding that he intended to dispose his father for his crime and instability and restore, restore peace with the great houses of the realm. Rhaegar and Robert's forces finally clashed at the climactic Battle of the Trident at the crossing of the King's Road over the river, not far from the inn at the crossroads. Rhaegar's army was fresh and slightly larger, but Robert's was more battle hardened, and they slowly gained ground. Robert, uh, Rhaegar, and Robert spotted each other across the battlefield and rode out to fight, resulting in an epic duel which raged for hours as the battle dragged on around them. Robert finally killed Rhaegar with a mighty blow from his war hammer, which caved in Rhaegar's breastplate. His armor had been stubbed with red rubies, which were sent flying throughout the ford in the river, which ever since became known as the Ruby Ford. Their leader killed the Targaryen army, collapsed, and the rebels were victorious. With Rhaegar's death, the Targaryen cause was doomed. Most of their supporters had been fighting for Rhaegar, not the Mad King. So after he died, most either surrendered or switched sides, not to mention that the main Targaryen army had been destroyed at the Trident. The rebel army continued unopposed south to King's Landing, but Tywin Lannister's army arrived there first. Tywin had kept the Lannisters neutral throughout most of the war and only made the calculated decision to side with the rebels after it became obvious they could win. To curry the favor with Robert and his allies after the war ended, Tywin feigned that he had brought, brought his army to help Eris in his time of greatest need, but as soon as they were let inside the gates of King's Landing, the Lannister army promptly began to brutally sack the entire city. Rhaegar's father, the Mad King, was himself killed by his own king's guard, Tywin's son, Jaime Lannister, to stop him from enacting the wildfire plot to burn down the city. Meanwhile, Lannister soldiers gained entry into the Red Keep. Sir Gregor Clegane, known as the Mountain that Rides, cornered Rhaegar's wife, 
uh, Elia and her two small children in the royal apartments. Gregor killed Rainus and baby er uh, and baby Aegon while their mother Elia watched helplessly, then raped Elia before killing her too. Shortly before the sack, Rhaegar's heavily pregnant mother Queen Rhaelia, oh man, these names are so fucking hard right now, had been sent to safety on Dragonstone Island along with his younger brother Viserys. Not long after they arrived, however, Rhaelia died giving birth to Rhaegar, Rhaegar's posthumous, posthumous younger sister, Daenerys Targaryen. Viserys and his newborn sister then fled into exile in the free cities across the narrow sea before Robert's soldiers could arrive on the island. Lyanna Stark did not survive much longer than Rhaegar after arriving at King's Landing in the aftermath of the sack. Her brother Eddard rode south with his companions, searching for her before finding her at the Tower of Joy in the western mountains of Dorne, protected by the last of the Targaryen King's Guard, the legendary Sir Arthur Dane, and Sir Gerald Hightower, who had secretly been ordered by Rhaegar himself to keep her and her unborn child safe. Eddard and his companions fought them in an epic confrontation at the end of which were all of which all were dead except for himself and the wounded Howland Reed. Eddard raced inside only to find that Lyanna was dying from childbirth after her given birth to her son, Rhaegar's last child and heir. With the la with her last breath, Lyanna told Eddard of her secret marriage to Rhaegar and that their son's name was Aegon Targaryen. Lyanna made Eddard promise to keep him safe, because if Robert ever found out that Rhaegar had a surviving heir, he would kill him, not least of which because, as Rhaegar's lawful son, he was the real legitimate heir to the Iron Throne, ahead of Rhaegar's younger siblings. To protect his sister's son, Eddard departed the with Rhaegar and Lyanna's newborn child, and took him back to Winterfell. Eddard claims his nephew as his bastard son, fathered on campaign to keep the child safe, names him Jon Snow, and raises him in Winterfell. Well, that's going to be it for today, my friends. Uh, in the next video, uh, which I will upload a couple days from now, I will talk more about uh, Lannister lore. Um, so this video will probably go up on Monday, I want to say, and then the Lannister video, maybe Wednesday or Thursday, I'll try to spread them out throughout the week in time for the premiere of season eight of Game of Thrones. I hope you guys are excited, as excited as I am. I'm super pumped and I figured this video, um, these series of videos would be perfect, um, to celebrate the occasion. I have a whole playlist of Game of Thrones videos and I will link them below for your convenience so that you guys can um you know catch up on the lore or get your memories refreshed um and relax of course because that's important too uh, but i digress thank you my friends for tuning in uh to this video and i as always keep doing your thing and i look forward to seeing you in the next one take care my friends and have a